Is there an element of nostalgia in your paintings here? Yeah, I knew that would come up. Um, two or three people have said that. And um, it, no, there isn't, but it's complicated because it does look like there's an element of nostalgia in the work because uh, she, she's an image from uh, Popular Mechanics magazine probably from the 50s. He's from a book from the 1960s. Um, he, this is from a scientific text, probably from the 70s. This is from a children's drawing, scribbler, coloring book, probably from the 1950s. The fact is, is um, as well as collecting images that remind me of myself, or that I kind of relate to, but not in a nostalgic sense, because I never dressed like a cowboy. Images like this, in those days, were all line drawings, because you couldn't reproduce photographs, actual photographs, in newspapers and telephone books. That's, that's a technology that only developed maybe in the 70s. I'm not sure. Um, and also, I prefer, the, I prefer found images that are line drawings because I'm a drawer, right? I do line drawing. <clears throat> and even when I'm painting, I'm painting color inside of a line drawing. I'm not a painter like, like uh, Jim, Lenz, Jim Lindsay is a painter, uh, or like Roy Green is a painter, or um, uh, Roberta Sutherland is a painter. I'm a drawer, even when I'm using lots of color. I'm a, I'm a drawer, I think like a drawer. So the nostalgic element, well, it's also not psychological because I'm not nostalgic about any particular part of my previous life. You know, I don't go, oh yeah, I wish I was still with Cindy Lou that I, you know, was with when I was 21, or, or I still with, wish I had the happy childhood that I had, because I didn't have a particularly happy childhood. And I'm, I'm rather glad that I left Cindy Lou when I was 22. <laughs> it was better for both of us. Um, so, th so the element of nostalgia is really a result of the fact that, that these are appropriated images from 50 years ago. You mentioned earlier that some of the drawings are like self-portraits. So are they self-portraits or not? Yeah, well, um, let's see, I have, there's two images in here that I f feel are real self-portraits and that's this image of the boy drawing. Because my hair was like that when I was a teenager, I had more hair. And also, I wore shirts with collars like this and with pockets like this because in the 60s, that was kind of a, a convention. I don't think it was ever fashionable. Uh, and then the other one, the other image that I, I relate to personally is this image of the more of a young man, let's say, you know, the age of 20, and he's a successful budding graphic artist and he's wearing a, a white shirt, and he's wearing a sleeveless, probably a, a v-neck sweater. And um, uh, I like to think that, that that looks like me when I was that age. Um, and I'm also, I'm also working on um, a common theme in my work currently now, is the relationship between the artist and the model. And that's a theme that has been in Western art history for hundreds and hundreds of years. And uh, I'm using it in a, in a very formal sense, but it probably also has personal psychic meaning for me, because sometimes my girlfriends have been models, or have modeled for me, I should, guess I should say. Uh, I've had girlfriends that were dancers, like with Toronto Dance Theatre, that kind of stuff. The drawings are, are about the relationship of the artist to the model, and I guess it's therefore also about my relationship to the model, or my relationship to women 
I'm not sure. So they are self-portraits, and the whole thing has a kind of a self-portraiture element to it, but I haven't analyzed it very deeply, and I don't think I really intend to. I don't want to tell stories about my life. Many people think that your drawing or paintings are prints. Yeah. Is this deliberate? I mean, because... Well, um, somebody was in the gallery yesterday, I think, and he thought that the line drawing, in this one in particular, he thought the line drawing of the boy and the line drawing of the model were silkscreen, and that everything else was, I guess, painted. And um, I'm sometimes tempted to have a big screen made with this image of the drawing boy. That would take me back to series. If I did 20, just you know, printed the boy on blank sheets of watercolor paper and then stretched them all up the way I do here and then treated each one differently, um, in the sense that like somebody like Andy Warhol does that or did that, Sigmar Polk did that, they would have these templates made up and they would just use the image over and over and over again. Well, I, I prefer to hand draw the image each time. Even if I did two dozen images of this boy, more or less this size, I would still want to have the freedom to do it a bit differently, a bit, a bit smaller, a bit bigger, uh, or distorted, you know, you know by by putting the over projector over here and getting it on an angle so he's, he's a bit distorted and kind of a time-space feeling, I would rather have that option. I don't want to be locked in because then that, that, that goes back to the, to the uh, safety but the, but the pitfalls of working in series, being locked into something. And they're not paintings because um, I don't think like a painter. For instance, um, this edge here, which is a natural edge with dry brush, I just made sure I ran out of gesso before I got there. Um, for me, for me, that's even slightly, slightly pushing the boundaries of drawing. I'm fairly tight ass when it comes to drawing. <laughs> I don't, I don't scribble that much, although I love scribbling, as I've done on that drawing. I love going like this with the chalk pastel or, or something. But it's, to me, that's like breaking the rules. Is this uh, part of a series? No. I'm trying not to work in series. I've always worked in series since I was a kid. But I'm deliberately trying to avoid series now because this way of working is, is very different. When I work in a series, I spend months designing the look of the series and designing the content. No, not the content, but designing the subject and the theme the materials, the dimensions, like my last series, which I showed at Deluge. It took me ages to figure out the size of the different components of drawing, and I don't want to work that way now. I want to approach each blank piece of paper as a unique experience, which is almost the opposite of working in series. It's more difficult because I don't have any, there's no, there's no, um, uh, there's no protection. I, I might, I might ruin it. Uh, but on the other hand, it's much harder in a way to ruin these drawings because uh, if I do something in it that I don't like, I just erase it or I paint over it or I, I get rid of it somehow and then I continue. With the kind of work I'm doing since 2012, when I started working this way, I've had to destroy 
I mean cut up, that's destroying, only about four drawings. And the parts that I cut up, I use in other drawings. So in a sense, nothing is destroyed. But what I'm doing is I'm working in themes. And um, there's, there's a common theme that has developed in all of these works, which, which I refer to as the drawing boy. And that's this image here of the drawing boy, which I got from a textbook on drafting for high school students published in the 1960s. And the reason I like this drawing boy is that it, he looks like me in the 1960s when I was a high school art student. And um, so I'm working on another theme, and that is uh, or another aspect of this theme is that there are also self-portraits. But I might move away from that. I I'm, I'm pursuing a theme as long as it's interesting. But if something comes in and, and becomes more interesting, then I'll pursue that for a while. In other words, I think I'm painting, or rather I'm drawing, in a much more common way now, in, in a way that most artists work. Because a lot of artists do series, but more artists don't do series. Uh, from uh, kind of goofy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the write up that I? And um, so he called me up, and I wrote this in about two hours. <laughs> 